So, I've been reading the comments and you want longer trade tree videos, do ya? Alright, okay. Cause I get it, you've been getting little snacks lately, you've been getting some shorter ones that I still think are pretty interesting, but they're just not as long as, say, the Eric Lindros trade tree video that we did that's over 40 minutes long. Today's trade tree isn't quite on par with the Eric Lindros trade tree, although very few are, but it's much larger than you think. Let's go back in time to when the Columbus Blue Jackets traded Rick Nash to the New York Rangers. Here it is, here it is, it's still going in. Oh my goodness, the name's at the bottom. You gotta read with a microscope. You better thank freelance editor Tom for putting this together right now. You better thank him. Let's not waste any more time. Let's take a look at the Rick Nash trade tree. By the way, I was choosing a part of the basement to shoot this video in and I realized I don't really have any Rangers or Blue Jacket stuff. I got a little teddy bear I got in Columbus at the All-Star game in 2015. I got Mark Messier. I got Henrik Lundqvist, who was also traded. Oh wait, no, 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 sorry, the Rangers lost him for nothing. Well, actually, less than nothing because they bought him out. Sorry, too soon? But Lundqvist isn't the franchise player that we're talking about here. We're talking about Rick Nash. During the 2001-2002 season, Rick Nash was a phenom with the OHL's London Knights. 32 goals, 40 assists for 72 points in just 54 OHL games in his draft year. The Knights didn't go all the way in the OHL playoffs. They only played 12 games, but in those 12 games, Nash had 10 goals and 19 points. He wasn't exactly exactly the reason they lost. And with the first overall pick in 2002, the Columbus Blue Jackets said, so you like carrying teams, do ya? But it wasn't always Columbus's pick to make. Weird trade at the draft in June 2002 between then Columbus GM Doug McLean and Panthers GM Rick Dudley. The trade was this. The Panthers trade the first overall pick to the Columbus Blue Jackets in exchange for the third overall pick. That was it. What? That makes no sense. The Panthers got nothing out of it. No, not entirely true. The asterisk in there is the Panthers had the option to swap first rounders with Columbus in 2003. That was the next draft. The problem with that is the Panthers would eventually go on to get the first overall pick in 2003, so they weren't going to swap with Columbus. <gasps> of course, they did eventually trade that pick to the Pittsburgh Penguins. But that is a different trade tree for another day. What is important is the Columbus Blue Jackets move up from third to first, they have the first overall pick and they use it to select Rick Nash. And he was good. He was pretty good. Rick Nash, as a rookie in 2002-2003, had 17 goals, 22 assists, 39 points in 74 games with Columbus. The next season, as a sophomore, in 80 games, he had 41 goals! And you want to talk about an absolute island. He had 41 goals. 16 assists. Rick Nash, who was a teenager when that season began, put up 41 goals. His next closest goal scoring teammate was David Vaborny with 22. Trevor Latowski was third with 15. And you just know there was some scout out there like, oh, Rick Nash should pass more. Hey, I'm sure he would have if he had any options. Those 41 goals, by the way, as a sophomore were enough to earn Rick Nash the Maurice Rocket Richard Trophy as the NHL's top goal scorer. You might remember that as the year that the Rocket was split three ways because three different guys had 41 goals. It was Rick Nash, Jerome McGinley, and Ilya Kovalchuk. After the 04 5 lockout. Nash only put up 31 goals, but that's because he just played 54 games. It was actually a 47 goal pace if he was healthy. Nash would only score 27 goals the following season, but that would be the final time that he missed the 30 goal plateau with the Columbus Blue Jackets. After that, 38, 40, 33, 32, 30. None of those teams were good. None of them. Well, there was one. During the 2008-2009 season, the Columbus Blue Jackets were helped out by a rookie goalie named Steve Mason. You might have heard of him. To give you an idea of how young Steve Mason was during that season, he's 32 now. This rookie in his early 20s played 61 games for the Blue Jackets that season, throwing up a 9-16 save percentage. And during that playoff series, Rick Nash would tie for the team lead in scoring with three points in four games, which kind of tells you the whole story, doesn't it? All this losing was getting extremely tiresome for Rick Nash, who wasn't a kid anymore. So, during the 2011-12 season, the Blue Jackets did something drastic and acquired Jeff Carter from the Philadelphia Flyers. Now that deal was awful, and if you're thinking to yourself, wow, I'd love to watch that trade tree video, we've already made it, and you can check it out right here on this YouTube channel. Just type in Jeff Carter Trade Tree. It talks about how the Blue Jackets lost that deal twice and basically handed the Kings two cups. I'm pretty hesitant to hand out winners and losers in these things, but uh, yeah. So the Blue Jackets get Jeff Carter to keep Rick Nash happy. They end up dealing him to the Kings anyway, and that was it in the summer 
summer of 2012, Rick Nash was dealt to the New York Rangers. And the trade was as follows. Artem Anisimov, Tim Erickson, Brandon Dubinsky, and a first rounder in 2013 to the New York Rangers in exchange for Stephen Delisle, Rick Nash, and a third round pick in 2013. So you trade a guy like Rick Nash, you're obviously trying to build for the future. Did Columbus get some parts that could help with their future? Well, Artem Anisimov was a second round pick, but that was back in 2006. He was more of an established NHL player, pretty good like middle six guy. Tim Erickson, a defenseman, was a first rounder in 2009, the 23rd pick overall and was kind of a late bloomer who never bloomed. He did play with the Rangers. He would go on to play for the Blue Jackets a little bit, and the Blackhawks, and even a cup of coffee with the Leafs, but he never stuck around for longer than 31 games was the most he ever played in a season. He played in the AHL for a number of years until a couple years ago when he decided, screw it, I'm going to Vaxjo in Sweden, where he spent the last couple seasons. Did I say that right? I always say Vaxjo, but I'm, I'm positive that's wrong. Brandon Dubinsky, now that's not a prospect. That's an established NHL player. That's guy who's usually good for about 20 goals and 100 plus penalty minutes in a season, but during 2011-12, he had a down season, just 10 goals. So the Blue Jackets buy and low a little bit there. That's good. And the first round pick in 2013 was the 19th overall pick. Now, whenever we see a draft pick in these trade trees, especially a first rounder, we're like, oh my God, this could go on forever now. Well, that's only if you hit. In 19th overall in 2013, the Columbus Blue Jackets didn't. They selected Kirby Reichel 19th overall, and he played 43 games in the NHL, which is more than you or I, but it is not great value with the 19th overall pick, especially when the 20th overall pick, the very next pick, was Anthony Mantha. And it wasn't just Mantha who was available too. The 23rd overall pick, Andre Burakovsky. 26th, Shea Theodore, woof! The Blue Jackets would end up trading Kirby Reichel straight up to the Toronto Maple Leafs for defenseman Scott Harrington, who the Leafs got in the Phil Kessel deal, another trade tree that you can find on this channel. The Leafs were also supposed to give up a conditional pick in the deal, but the conditions were ultimately not met, so they got to keep it. It was just a straight up trade, Reichel for Harrington. Brandon Dubinsky, uh, and people talk about him now, and we'll get there, but he was great value for the Blue Jackets for a number of years. He starts during the lockout shortened 2013 season. He only plays 29 games, only had two goals, but he had 18 assists, so 20 points in 29 games, not bad. The next season in 76 games, so far more healthy, he had 16 goals and 50 points, and the Columbus Blue Jackets made the playoffs. And no, the Columbus Blue Jackets did not go on to do the thing against the Pittsburgh Penguins during that first round, but they put a little fear in them, and Brandon Dubinsky was a holy terror. Sure, he had six points in six games, tying him for the lead among forwards on the Blue Jackets in scoring, but more notably, Notably, he drove Sidney Crosby and the rest of the Penguins nuts. By the way, he was tied for the team lead among forwards. Anyone want to take a stab at who actually led the Blue Jackets in scoring in 2013 during the playoffs? Seven points in six games? Jack Johnson. Actually, who is now a Ranger. Whoa. Now, the unfortunate thing with Brandon Dubinsky, he's still with the Columbus Blue Jackets. He signed 5.85 million against the cap. Guys who play his style don't tend to have the longest careers. And even though his contract with the Columbus Blue Jackets does not end until the end of this upcoming season, he hasn't played a game with them since 2018-19. Meaning obviously he was never traded so we can go to another part of this tree. Tim Erickson. If Tim Erickson was the late bloomer defensive prospect who never bloomed, Jeremy Morin was the forward late bloomer prospect who never bloomed. Everyone seemed to go, maybe we can do it. He was the former 45th overall pick. That's the second rounder. 82 NHL games played. 28 was the most he ever played in a season. He was traded five times, and this was one of them. So Morin is now with the Columbus Blue Jackets, and they would end up trading him, along with Artem Anisimov, who had some memorable moments with the Blue Jackets. Anyone remember this, when he scored a goal against the Rangers and the celebration caused a brawl? Dubinsky to Delzato to Anisimov! He scores! We've got some after the goal stuff going on here. Down he goes after Anisimov. Dubinsky was involved. What, why, why was he kicked out of the game for that? You might be able to argue, well, he, he was simulating playing with a weapon, and that's not okay. The Columbus Blue Jackets goal horn is an actual cannon! 
we're getting a little caught up here. Artem Anisimov was packaged with Jeremy Morin, Marco Dano, and Corey Trapp and sent to the Chicago Blackhawks for Alex Broadhurst, Michael Pagliota, and Brandon Saad. Big deal. Alex Broadhurst was traded for future considerations, and for the life of us, we couldn't find out what those considerations were, so we're just going to assume they were nothing. Michael Pagliota, he only got into two games for the Columbus Blue Jackets. Put up an assist. He has an NHL point. That's cool. But the big name there is Brandon Saad, and the Blue Jackets did not give up a little to get him. Because they traded Marco Dano in this deal, a former first-round pick of theirs that they picked 27th overall in 2013. There's another guy who just, you wait, he's gonna bloom. He did play, he's gotten into 141 NHL games, but 45 points, never quite lived up to that first round potential. But Brandon Saad, oh, this guy, boy wonder, he was coming off of two cups in 2013 and 2015 with the Chicago Blackhawks. Not to mention during the 2015 playoffs, right before this trade, Saad put up 11 points in 23 Stanley Cup playoff games, eight of them goals. That is probably who the Columbus Blue Jackets thought they they were getting and he's gonna have the best season of his career coming up just you watch and the darndest thing he did he had 53 points which was only one more than the 52 he put up the season before but he had 31 goals to 23 from the season before he was a leader on the Blue Jackets team problem was no playoff hockey there this ain't Chicago. Puts up 53 points again the next season that's the 16-17 season and they do make the playoffs <gasps> but just three points in five games. Once again, this ain't the Blackhawks. And you know what? The Blackhawks weren't the Blackhawks anymore. Not the team that won three cups in six seasons anyway. So Chicago went and got him back. The Blue Jackets package Brandon Saad, goaltending prospect Anton Forsberg, and a fifth round pick in 2018, and they send him to the Chicago Blackhawks for a sixth round pick in 2017, Tyler Mott, and Artemi Panarin. Knowing what Artemi Panarin has become makes this trade wild. Looking at his numbers and what he was, it's still wild! His first two seasons in the National Hockey League, he had 77 and 74 points. He cracked the 30 goal plateau twice. He won Rookie of the Year ahead of Connor McDavid, man! And he was found money! Completely undrafted, this guy! He goes, I'm gonna sign with the Chicago Blackhawks. And they go, we hope you're good. And then he was, and then they gave him away. He had seven points in seven games in his first run in the playoffs in 2016, but just one in four in 2017. And the Blackhawks just went, well, that won't stand. We need to do something ridiculous. And people said, ah, well. Pernarin, now that he's going to the Blue Jackets, we'll, we'll see how he does when he doesn't have Patrick Kane to pass to. And then he followed that up by setting career highs in assists and points the next season with 82, and then he did it again the next season, 87 points. And the Blue Jackets made the playoffs both years, and Panarin put up more than a point per game in both of those runs. Seven points in six games and 11 points in 10. He was as advertised for the Blue Jackets, for sure. Brandon Saad? He's still a good player, he's put up 20 plus goals in each of the past two seasons, but he ain't Artemi Panarin, man. And one of the biggest defenses of this trade was, well, because of contract length and cap and all of that, the Blackhawks are going to get more out of this than Columbus, and you watch, Panarin's just going to walk. And he did. Might have got lost in this offseason, but Brandon Saad was actually traded to the Colorado Avalanche, so he ain't in Chicago either. Now. I think it's good to pause for a sec because we're less than halfway through this trade tree and how many trades have we talked about already? Sometimes a trade tree goes like, you ever see fireworks and there's an explosion and then a bunch of sparks go this way and they explode. That's what this is. There was the initial Rick Nash trade. Then there was the Big Bang to acquire Brandon Saad. Then there was the Big Bang trading away Brandon Saad and getting Artemi Pinar. And on the Blue Jackets side of this trade tree, there is one more, a fourth Big Bang. The 2020 Stanley Cup playoffs saw the Tampa Bay Lightning take home the Stanley Cup. The 2019 playoffs, no, and in part due to this trade. The Columbus Blue Jackets, using the sixth rounder they got in the Panarin deal, drafted Jonathan Davidson. Then they traded him in a package that included another prospect, Vitaly Abramov, a first round pick in 2019, and a conditional first round pick in 2020 to the Ottawa Senators for 
prospect Julius Bergman, and Matt Duchesne. I can hear producer Drew, who's a Colorado Avalanche fan, just going, boo! The Columbus Blue Jackets had a star that was potentially leaving town, and they wanted to make a big splash before he went. Have we heard this before? The Blue Jackets don't know if Panarin's gonna stick around, and he ended up not. And they don't know if Sergei Bobrovsky is gonna stick around, and he ended up not. So they went for it, and they acquired Matt Duchesne. And they weren't even done, because they took Julius Bergman, who they got along with Matt Duchesne, packaged him with a fourth rounder and a seventh rounder and traded him to the New York Rangers, who we'll get right back to in a minute, for Adam McQuaid. And McQuaid ended up being an awkward sort of fit in Columbus, and he only played 14 games for them. He didn't get into a single game in the playoffs, but he had playoff experience, and the Blue Jackets were just, there is no tomorrow. They're trading every pick they got to try to win this year. The problem was, the Columbus Blue Jackets, along with Artemi Pinar and along with Matt Duchesne, almost missed. But almost missing is extraordinarily different than missing because the Columbus Blue Jackets hold on, they barely make it to the playoffs, they take on the monster Tampa Bay Lightning in the first round. Tampa, just doing whatever they want. They're up three nothing after the first period. They're gonna win this series in three games, except they blew it that game and lost game one and game two, and game three, and game four, the Columbus Blue Jackets sweep the Tampa Bay Lightning. You know, Matt Duchesne takes a lot of grief. He's had a tough few years. He had 12 points in 23 games while the Blue Jackets were struggling to hold on to a playoff spot. When the playoffs arrived, though, he played 10 games and had 10 points. He was a big part of that team that upset the Lightning. A few notes before we put a bow on the Blue Jackets side of this trade tree for now. So if you're a Blue Jackets fan watching this right now, you might go, wow, we got Matt Duchesne because of the Rick Nash deal. No, not really. Remember, the guy connected to the Rick Nash deal in this trade that was also connected to the Duchesne trade is Jonathan Davidson, who is a recent sixth round pick. There was also another prospect in that deal, a guaranteed first round pick, and a conditional one. So did the Blue Jackets get Matt Duchesne and beat the Tampa Bay Lightning in 2019 because of the Rick Nash deal all those years ago? No, but it is part of the trade tree and it is connected and it's kind of fun. Also worth noting, extremely worth noting, that conditional first rounder in that trade, Columbus ended up keeping that because Matt Duchesne did not stick around with the Blue Jackets. But that pick stayed controversial because that was actually from this past draft where Jarmo Kekalainen selected someone 21st overall who people were just looking through their notes going, who the heck is this guy? The Blue Jackets drafted Yegor Chinnikov 21st overall with that 2020 first rounder that they would have given up for Matt Duchesne but didn't have to because he didn't stick around. Chinnikov was projected by some to go in the 70s, 80s, 90s, maybe even over 100 and they got him 21st. It's worth noting that Chinnikov is not looking as off the board as he did on draft day. He's had a good start to the season in the KHL with Avangard Omsk. To wrap it up, there is one trade on Columbus's side of the tree I didn't mention, and it's another playoff rental. The Blue Jackets took Tyler Mott, who they got in the Panarin deal, and packaged him with UC Jokinen and sent him to the Vancouver Canucks in exchange for Thomas Vanek. Vanek had a pretty good rest of the regular season with Columbus, not as good of a playoff, and then he left the team. And right now, if you're going, wait a second, Vanek played for the Blue Jackets. Uh, that was news to me too when I saw this. He's played for eight different NHL teams. It's kind of funny to me that this all began with the Blue Jackets just never being able to find playoff success or even playoff games for Rick Nash to play in. But in this trade tree, years later and down the line, they would get a player, Artemi Panarin, that would be a key part in one of the most memorable playoff series, certainly in franchise history, but definitely in modern NHL history. Now. What did the New York Rangers get in the Rick Nash deal? Because there's a reason you get a player like Rick Nash, you're trying to win the Stanley Cup. <laughs> Rick Nash's first full season with the New York Rangers wasn't a full season. He played 44 games in the lockout shortened 48 game season in 2013, but he made an impact. 21 goals, 21 assists for 42 points in those 44 games. If you're wondering what pace that is, it's 39 goals and 39 assists over an 82 game season. And yeah, one goal, four assists, five points in 12 games. Not big. And the next season, Rick Nash's regular season numbers taken kind of a hit. 26 goals in 65 games. It seems like he can always score goals, but just the 13 assists for 39 points. Eh. In the playoffs, three goals, seven assists for 10 points in 25 games. Now, that's not breaking the doors off, but 
He did get into 25 games. The Rangers were cooking with something different that year, and they went all the way to the Stanley Cup Final, and Nash was part of that. Rangers fans, I'm sorry, but you all know how that ended. LA, Alec Martinez, I'm so sorry. I just, to come so close. And maybe that fueled Rick Nash's fire to come so close and not win because during the 2014-15 season, he had one of the best seasons of his career. In 79 games, being healthy helps, 42 goals, which is a career high for Rick Nash, a guy who won the Rocket Richard. So he scored more that year than he did when he scored the most goals in the entire NHL. And he had 69 points. Rangers go on another deep run and Nash was a much bigger part of that team. Five goals, 14 points in 19 games, but again, they don't quite get there. After that magical 42 goal season, the most goals Nash ever scored in another NHL season was 23. He never quite got that scoring touch back. Nash's final three seasons after that 42 goal season saw just 67, 60, and 71 games played. And in his 2017-18 season, in the 60 games that he played with the Rangers, he still had 18 goals, 10 assists, 28 points. All right, that's not a star anymore, but that's a player. There's something there. And the Boston Bruins agreed, so they went after him. And it was quite the package. The Boston Bruins acquire Rick Nash in exchange for Matt Bolesky, Ryan Spooner, Ryan Lindgren. It's, there's more than one Ryan in this deal. A first round pick in 2018 and a seventh round pick in 2019. Now we know the story of Matt Bolesky. It was, it was a big one on Cap Friendly. He had a huge season with the Anaheim Ducks. He signs for a lot of money in Boston didn't quite live up to the deal, and his role in this trade was, well, he only played five games for the Rangers. He spent most of his time in the AHL. Ryan Spooner, that's another name, a 45th overall pick from 2010. This, another late bloomer, when's he gonna bloom? The Rangers think they got something with him in his first 20 games with them. He has 16 points, starts the next season sluggishly though, but they turn that into a fleecing. <laughs> the New York Rangers traded Ryan Spooner to the Edmonton Oilers straight up for Ryan Strome, who this past season had 59 points in 70 games. That, that is a amazing deal for the Rangers. And we keep seeing old trade trees pop up in this trade tree. If you want more info on that Spooner Strome deal, it comes up in the Jordan Eberle trade tree that we did recently on this channel. Ryan Lindgren also in this deal, a second round pick defenseman from 2016. He was a regular in the Rangers lineup this past season playing in 60 games. He's still just 22 years old, room to grow, who knows what he develops into. The seventh rounder is a weird one. They sent that 2019 seventh rounder to the Carolina Hurricanes for a 2018 seventh rounder. Just a little note on that, that I've always found that to just be like high stakes gambling. It always seems to happen like sort of midway to the end of the draft. A team goes, hey, we'll give you a fourth next year in for your fourth this year. Because you're making a bet with that deal that you're gonna be better than you were the year before, or you're not gonna stink because if you stink then that pick is gonna be high in the round and you're going to lose spots somehow in a 31 team league the New York Rangers and Carolina Hurricanes picked 216th overall in back-to-back -back drafts so no harm, no foul. The sort of thing that's only interesting if you're a nerd, which is why I found it so interesting. The last part of this deal is a big one. The Rangers packaged the first rounder they got from the Boston Bruins with a second rounder, so that's the 26th and 48th overall picks in 2018 to move up to 22nd in 2018, where they selected Keandre Miller. Big defenseman from St. Paul, Minnesota, six foot three, over 200 pounds, playing at the University of Wisconsin. The Rangers are expecting big things from Keandre Miller. But remember, the Rangers got three things from Columbus in this deal, and one of them was a third rounder. The Rangers used that third rounder in 2013, we're going back in time now, to select Pavel Buchnevich. That's not a superstar, but it's a guy who's always on their roster. He put up a career high 46 points this past season. Buchnevich is a part of the Rangers. And this is something that we talked about in another trade tree that we did on this channel. The Ryan McDonough trade tree. The Rangers making that deal with the Montreal Canadiens so many years ago. Because what happened there? The New York Rangers traded off Scott Gomez and got Ryan McDonough in return. Now in that case the Rangers were the selling team but they just struck it rich with McDonough. Then years later the Rangers get really good and they 
compete for the Stanley Cup and they come very close and then they start to see the sun setting on their team. So what do they do? The Rangers trade Ryan McDonough to the Tampa Bay Lightning for a whack of stuff that is going to make them good in the future. For me, this is just another example of the Bruins getting a guy, getting good, shooting their shot, seeing the writing on the wall, and then getting a whack of futures that only make them better. Pavel Buchnevich, that's a little different. That's them getting a pick from the Blue Jackets and hitting on it. But Ryan Lindgren, Ryan Strom, Keandre Miller? That's the Rangers just being smart. Remember earlier in the trade tree when I talked about there being the principal part of a deal and they're just being a guy? Steven Delisle. I. Steven Delisle, I, I, I think that's how you pronounce his name, he, he never played an NHL game. But the Rangers got him from the Columbus Blue Jackets and he is part of this trade tree. And he goes on to get traded. You wanna know who he got traded for? Okay, get ready, cause this is gonna be the speed round. <laughs> Steven Delisle was a former uh, fourth round pick defenseman Played a lot of games in the ECHL, the AHL. He, he played in Frankfurt, Germany last season, but never quite panned out in the NHL. So if you were to go to the Columbus Blue Jackets and say, would you like Steven Delisle back? They might say, mm, we'll think about it. But then you might go, hmm, okay, let me rephrase that. Would you like Steven Delisle and Marion Gabrick? Uh, their answer might be different. And that's when the New York Rangers packaged Steven Delisle with Marion Gabrick and Blake Parlett. And they sent them to the Columbus Blue Jackets for, <clears throat> Derek Broussard, Derek Dorsett, John Moore, and a sixth round pick in 2014. And you're about to see why this is the speed round. <laughs> Later on, the New York Rangers end up packaging Derek Broussard with a seventh round pick in 2018 and sending him to the Ottawa Senators in exchange for a second rounder in 2018 and Mika Zabanajad. Zabanajad for Broussard is bad enough, but they got a second rounder out of it too. Oh! But the Rangers don't hold on to that second rounder in 2018. They package it with a seventh rounder in 2018 and they send it to the Detroit Red Wings for Brendan Smith, who the Rangers got from the Detroit Red Wings and signed to a giant contract before almost immediately deciding mm, we shouldn't have done that and making him a healthy scratch. Derek Dorsett, he was a New York Ranger for a while until they traded him to the Vancouver Canucks in exchange for a third round pick in 2014, who ended up being Keegan Iverson. John Moore was a big name for the New York Rangers for a while, and he ended up getting packaged with Anthony Duclair, who also was a big name for the Rangers for a while, and a first rounder in 2016, and a second rounder in 2015, and sent to the Arizona Coyotes in exchange for defenseman Keith Yandel, Chris Summers, and a fourth round pick in 2016. Down the line, Yandel would end up getting traded to the Florida Panthers in exchange for a sixth and a fourth round pick. Worth noting that in 2016, with that sixth round pick, the New York Rangers drafted a goalie named Tyler Wall, which is sick. The fourth round pick they got, they ended up sending to the San Jose Sharks in exchange for another fourth round pick in 2017 and a sixth rounder in 2017. And the sixth rounder the Rangers got from Columbus in this deal, they packaged with Ben Ferrero and sent to the Minnesota Wild for Justin Falk. Wait a sec, when did the New York Rangers have Justin Falk? You're wondering, no, it's not that Justin Falk, it's this Justin Falk. His name is just spelled differently and also it's not the same person. Steve, why was that the speed round? I'll tell you. Okay, the New York Rangers acquire Rick Nash from the Columbus Blue Jackets, easy. Then they send him to the Boston Bruins, easy. And part of that package is Ryan Spooner and then Ryan Spooner is traded straight up for Ryan Strom. Easy. Nothing is shoehorned there. But the New York Rangers did not get Derek Broussard and therefore Mika Zibanejad because of Steven Delisle, who they got from the Blue Jackets and then gave back. They got him for Marion Gabrick, who was not part of the original trade here. It's shoehorned in, it's just for fun. And for any Rangers fans right now who are like, no, screw that, I wanna say that the Rangers have Mika Zibanejad because of Rick Nash, you don't need to shoehorn it. You don't need to say that because the Rangers did so well without having to just make that up. They got and still have Ryan Strom out of this trade tree. They got and still have Ryan Lindgren out of this trade tree. They got and still have Pavel Buchnevich out of this trade tree. And Keandre Miller is about to begin his NHL career. And folks, I think it's gonna be pretty good. And not to mention the Rangers had for a number of years Rick Nash. So, what'd you think of this trade tree? Leave a comment in the comment box down below. And for now, that is it for this one. Thank you very much for watching. Click like if you like this video. Click subscribe if you really like to tell all your friends. Trade trees, they take a while. I need a beer. <laughs>